Hey there guys, DMO73 here, bringing you the deck profile for the Black Blue Charlotte uh, Stealth list uh, made by Team Ogre members, um, primarily Dell, Gabe, and Saito, uh, and then kind of each of us made our little personal tweaks to it um, for the main board for AGP um, Collinsville. Uh, I personally took this list to a 5-3 finish, uh, losing my last round to fellow Team Ogre member Eric, who was on the same list, who piloted it to a 5.03 finish uh, and we also had Dell who ended up taking ninth place with the list um, super really strong it was really good for the meta um, almost a perfect choice for the meta uh, some of the Lumia hook players um, particularly like Ryan Miles and as you saw Driz had some tech choices that kind of got in the way a little bit um, but overall a really good uh, really good strong deck for the meta right now um, your main weak matchup is just Val 2 uh, so and I'll explain kind of why that is and what we did to kind of prevent that so obviously um, Charlotte is the ruler we primarily use her because of her ability to tap stuff down which helps her deal with aggro uh, she has energized and she has a very cheap judgment flips over into um, being able to be a 412, refills your hand, which is excellent, plus the life gain. You know, with stealth, we're kind of hurting our own life here a little bit. So being able to regain that life is really awesome and being able to bounce resonators back to your opponent's hand with, you know, that discard outlet is great. She essentially turns any bad dead card at a time into kind of a pseudo removal spell, which is super fantastic. And refilling your hand is excellent, especially in Dark Mirrors. I remember someone hit me with a Valentina's Reach uh, and emptied my hand, and then the next turn I just flipped and refilled it. Uh, and they had tapped out to do it, so I was just able to massively punish. Moving on to the stones, um, we run four Dark Depths. Obviously we're black blue and we want the water and darkness sources. Uh, Three remains of Adaroctia, which is a little greedy, I will admit, but we needed that extra water source. We wanted it to be a guaranteed water magic stone, uh, and sometimes in controls, mirrors, you don't necessarily need to pay for it based on the matchup, um, so that was not too bad. I never found myself hurting because of these remains. And then one each of Aloof Researcher's Memoria. This is excellent with Charlotte's Protector for, like, draw one, um, essentially just pay three, draw two, which is fantastic. Um... A Sorrowful Necromancy's Memoria to help in mirrors, uh, to get rid of cards, remnant cards and stuff like that. And a one-off Darkness Magic Stone, and the reason why we played this, this was Gabe's idea, so that a Captain Hook can never truly get us down to zero stones if we've got this, you know, hit off the top. So, it can be very, very relevant. Uh, moving into the Resonators, not a ton. We run four of Charlotte's Protector, who is more of a removal spell than anything else. He's also great versus the Mirror. You can use him in Soul Hunt to replace himself. Um, Soul Hunt is a really good card against Mana Dork decks, and this guy really just couples with that to make it excellent. Um, plus, getting da uh, several times I was Lapis Darkstormed, and I had two of these in my hand, and the random card was one of these, and the card I chose was one of these, so I just got to draw two free cards, and their Darkstorm was worthless. And then four each of uh, Ryza and, or sorry, four Ryza and three Melder. We thought about putting in the fourth Melder. We probably would put it in the side versus like Turbo Feath, uh, but we didn't expect to see a lot of it. Um, there were only four players on it in the whole event. So usual stealth finish off package, just really, really strong. And the ability for Ryza to grab Lunar Lakes is super relevant. And then a Charlotte Wielder of the Sacred Spirit. This is excellent in control games or when games get really grindy and long. Uh, the more cards in your hand, the stronger she gets, and they just can't target her um, with anything, so she becomes devastating. This is also an excellent tool versus Val 2. Um, if you can get her out and kind of keep Val 2 suppressed long enough, um, this card can just put on a lot of hurt. Uh, same thing with like Dark Alice. If you can control Dark Alice pretty well, prevent her from flipping, or after she's already flipped, you land one of these. Um, Dark Alice just can't really keep up. Moving into the spells. Uh, four Soul Hunt to help deal with Mana Dorks, uh, as well as just small creatures and manipulate the board a little bit. Also helps us with a discard outlet, and we don't necessarily care about discarding our own cards because of Protector and because we can just refill our hand. Uh, two Dark Pulse, which also helps with Mana Dorks and dealing with um, things like Guinevere on the turn they're playing so they don't get the value out of it. Also partners really well with the two of Charlotte's uh, Water Transformation Magic. We play a couple bows, so this is an excellent card. You can steal Swiftness with it. It's another free Remnant card, so we can discard it to Charlotte without being too concerned. Um, four Space-Time Anomalies. Again, it's our kind of 
our second real hard removal uh, and our real uh, answer to J rulers, uh, as well as being able to pitch it with Charlotte again and still use it later. A one of Magic Rebound, which honestly I wouldn't play. Uh, I would probably put a third Unseen Pressure in over this. Um, I never really used it, but in Control Mirrors, this can be pretty effective. Um, and especially against like Stealth Mirrors where they have bows and stuff, you can just reflect their bows back to their face down cards, which is really nice. Uh, three of Lapis Dark Storm for uh, hand discard, obviously. Uh, two of Black Moonbeam because we're not playing any addition hate and we need to be able to get past the first Wind Secluded Refuge. Actually in the sideboard we put two more Black Moonbeam, so we played four of between the main and the side. Uh, just because in games where we saw double Black Moonbeam um, and the they weren't playing any kind of discard, we usually just crushed Val 2. Uh, and so we wanted to be able to see multiple of it. And then three of uh, Lunar Lake, it's super standard card right now. Um, very, very important to be able to cancel those hooks. Uh, things like Griffin from Fox, uh, even Rises and Melders in the Mirror, so super relevant. And then for the Regalia, we play a one of Scythe just to be able to give Imperishable and some Swiftness. A two of Death Scythe because it's repeatable and we can kind of keep reusing it with Charlotte to discard over and over and over again. Uh, three bows to be able to kind of pop standbys in the mirror or deal with things with um, the Charlotte's Water Transformation Magic, and then a horn to be able to recycle our deck as needed. So that is it for the deck profile. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and take you over. If you would like, you can just check out the list down below, or if you would like to hear how things went at Collinsville, uh, you're more than welcome to keep watching the video and hear my tournament report. So if you leave now, thanks. If you stick around, awesome. Uh, and so I'll just pass it back over to me. Okay, so to give you guys kind of a tournament report of how I did with the Charlotte list, uh, there were eight rounds, 211 players. Um, round one, I played against Red White Blazer Knights. Uh, I played game one, um, just made him discard his hell hand uh, while keeping all those creatures off the board. He didn't really stick many Lancelots because uh, I was able to kind of get rid of them with Soul Hunt and Unseen Pressures and, and, and stuff like that, or the protection of them with Unseen Pressures and bows and bear magics and stuff. So game one, he lost his whole hand, and then I just kind of curve out there. Uh, game two, he sticks like three Lancelots in three turns, and I didn't see a single Soul Hunt, so of course he wins that one. Uh, and then game three went exactly the same way as game one, just like every creature, as soon as it hit the board, would just get killed, um, and then just slowly ripped his hand apart and kept my pressure up. Never flipped Charlotte any of the three games because I didn't want to keep him Blazer. Uh, essentially just got him down to one card, top decking, and answered that top deck every single turn and then just won. So uh, then I moved into round two and I played against uh, kind of a dark Charlotte mirror. Kind of. In the sense that he was not playing stealth <clears throat> like I was. He was playing Captain Hooks. Um, which just kind of gives me the advantage there. Uh, he was also playing uh, Splash Green, uh, and I was playing pure black blue, so my curve was a little bit more pure. Um, and yeah, so I just, that was uh, one, I finished that first game, uh, and then game two I sideboarded into Valentina, because we sideboarded into Valentina 2 uh, for control mirrors essentially, um, to outvalue them, and then it did its job outvaluing it with searching up bows, searching up all my regalia, um, you know, it had just curved out perfect there, uh, so then he just couldn't answer Valentina. So, um, Yes, yeah, so that was game two, round two, round three. I played against um, Fox, uh, sitting at table two, I believe, at this point. Yeah, so played against Fox. Um, it was discard Fox, uh, and I never let him resolve a Griffin um, with Lunar Lakes. And I played the you could only have one creature at a time um, game. Uh, so, like, when he would play one, I would immediately respond and, like, kill the other one before the other one resolved. Uh, and then, like, I flipped over into Charlotte, and then I just started bouncing the two creatures back and forth so he could never have two creatures on board. Uh, it also helped that both games, he like or game one, he didn't see a Killing Stone until, like, turn five. Um, so I had a lot of, like, just time to play around and, and set up. Uh, and then rounds two, or game two, um, I stayed on Charlotte and everything else, and I just opened up really well with like double Lunar Lake and everything else. And, and he, he kind of just walked into the Lunar Lakes, which I thought was a little bit interesting. Like he would Griffin, he, like he would sack for everything else, uh, like tap out, sack for 
uh, griffin, and then I would just be like, okay, Lunar Lake, and he wouldn't have a response, and so then he would lose the griffin, the three cards, like, it was a perfect four for one, um, like, each time, and it felt really weird, because the second time he did it, like, he grabbed, like, he was like, I'm gonna grab griffin, uh, do you have the Lunar Lake? And I was like, yeah, I've got the Lunar Lake right here, and he just put it straight into the graveyard, so, like, he knew that Lunar Lake was sitting there, but he still ran into it, and it just, it felt really weird, um, but I won that one 2-0, uh, round four, I played against, um, let's see, round four, I played against, uh, Val 3, Stealth Mirror, um, and I just gained value there, uh, mainly because I have a much easier way of regard, uh, recovering my hand, and I'm not nearly as vulnerable to discard because of the Charlotte Protectors, um, so, like, I can pay two and flip and refill my hand, and he has to Valentine his reach and tap out to, to redraw his hand. Um, and so I just outvalue them there and then game two I switched to Val 3 because he was blue black or game two I switched to Val 2 because he was pure blue black So all of my regalia were gonna be safe like the whole time and so I just outvalue him from there um, And I actually beat him game two in turns in time. So that was a 2-0 win despite going to time uh, Round five I played against Frank Klosser from Rebirth uh, he played Val 2, which was my hardest matchup, honestly the hardest matchup for this deck. Um, so game 1 he curves out perfect, uh, gets, just bashes my face in. Um, game 2 I managed to get double Black Moonbeam in my opener hand, uh, and I just sit and wait. Uh, and he only was running one uh, Wind Secluded Refuge, so stuck them both uh, and killed Valentina. And so then from there it was just, you know, a matter of just curving out and taking care of the sacred beast and it was over at that point uh, and then game three uh was really close it was a nice little grind um i had switched into val two uh games two and game three to try to get hydra monica and mary bell and stuff to be able to get the black moon beams and, and pop his regalia a little bit more effectively um and I had one Black Moon Beam, but I didn't get the chance to grab the other one. And we boarded into four total Black Moon Beams. Uh, if I had seen the second one, or if I had a little bit more time to be able to Hydro Search for the second one, I would have had that game. Um, but Frank uh, curved really well. Uh, and so I was only, uh, the back and forth, I was only able to get one of them. Um, and so he won that. So that was a loss in round five. Uh, round six, I played against, round six, um... It's like totally my fault that I lost. I, I really blame myself for the most part. Um, so I played against another Rebirth member who um, uh, who was playing Turbo Feasting, one of the four Turbo Feasting players of the day. So game one, I actually win. Um, I curve it out really, really well. I keep everything off the board. I'm bouncing things, recovering my hands, killing stuff, killing all those mana dorks. It's, it's really good. Game two, um, the dizziness really kicks in for the fact that I didn't follow my own instructions and eat well <laughs> throughout the day, uh, and I start making really bad plays, um, just really not feeling it at that point. I like set Ariza with only three stones and that taps me out, and he proceeds to just curve out and go nuts. Uh, and then, so I probably could have won game two if I hadn't been misplaying like crazy. Uh, and then game three, he opens up like nuts. So like turn three, he's got like double Gwyber, double Titania. And I'm like, well, I can't really answer four cards that all have flying in our 12-12s, so I think you win. So I give him the game, um, but he was a great guy. All of my matches, even my losses were fun and going to game threes is always good for me. Um, so then round seven, I finally get to play against Lumia Hook, the deck that our deck is designed to beat. Uh, he was not playing Zha Wu Jings, and so at that point it was just easy wins. Uh, so it was a 2-0 there. And then round 8, I play against fellow team Ogre member, um, Eric Hennig, who, uh, he and I are just like, oh my gosh, because where we were sitting, well, only one of us was going to get the promo. Uh, the winner was going to get the promo. Um, get pushed into top 32. Wouldn't have mattered if we had top 64 promos, but top 32 promos, so that was unfortunate. Um... So, we play game one, he opens up stealth stuff, I don't open up anything or any anti-stealth stuff, so he wins there. Uh, game two, I open up, we both go into Valentina three, or two, and I open up perfect, and like on turn three I slam him for like 825 damage. Uh, I just go for it, and then he doesn't see Black Moonbeam, and so I just slam him again. Um, so then game three became a grind, and... Um, I probably could have won if I had remembered to play the second Death Scythe, 
but I uh, didn't, and he did. So essentially what happens is with Mary Bell, um, with Valentina, and he said he learned that lesson throughout the day, and it made sense because I only played Val 2 once. Um, like, you marry Bell to pop their death scythe at upkeep, and then you recover and then slam their face. But if you have two, then it takes them more work, and they can't get imperishable, they can't get the swiftness. Uh, and so I made the mistake of not grabbing the second one. Uh, and I also could have won in turns, in time, because it goes to, um, uh, it goes to life, uh, totals at the end. And I was technically above on life, but I never searched for tank. And if I had searched for tank, then I literally just could have kept tapping down Val 2 forever. Um, and just outvalued him, but I didn't. So he won that game three. Uh, it was fun. He and I were goofing around back and forth. So I ended up the match 5-3, uh, and I took 45th place out of 211. So there's my tournament report. Hope you guys liked the deck profile and the report. Looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible at the next uh, GP that I attend. i um, not sure which one that's going to be. But uh, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, this is DMO73, signing off.